Hi, uh, so I'm going to answer the question by asking by Johnny. Um, he's asking the question that can you solve the problem on Chapter 3B, Question 6? And this is asking the entropy uh, of the system change when the system has any three moles of gases and uh, he has a property of constant heat capacity, constant pressure heat capacity with that value. And it says that from certain temperature, that's an initial temperature, initial pressure, to final temperature, final uh, pressure. And it didn't say whether it has changed, uh, has, the change has been happening, reversible, irreversible, isothermal, adiabatic, it doesn't say anything. But is it sufficient information to solve it? The answer is yes. Because entropy is a state function, all that matters is delta S change from initial temperature, initial pressure, and the final temperature, final pressure. And those are the information that is all you need because uh, entropy is defined from your initial, your final. Okay? is final as initial. So uh, what we need to do is we need to just take the advantage of the fact that some processes are easy to uh, calculate the delta S uh, for redefine the process. So having said that, I, I usually like to draw the diagram uh, just to represent, graphically represent, uh, the uh, change in the temperature and the change in the pressure. So let me just put the temperature here, pressure and the temperature on, on two axes, and so you are here, uh, one atmospheric pressure, and then you are at 25 degrees C, which you will change if I later to Kelvin. Just for now, we just want to graphically know where we are. And you increase the temperature is going to the right hand side, you increase the pressure is two. So something like that, and that will be your five ATM. And that will be your 125 degrees C. And then the the system can undergo any many different ways that they want. And here is a graphically and we do not know. But for the fact that uh, we want to uh, calculate it is we want to take the advantage of the fact that it happens in constant pressure process by changing temperature. And then it goes to second stage, which is a uh, isothermal at 125 degrees C and changing the pressure from low to high pressure. So this is, on, I guess, the uh, uh, stage number one. And this is stage number two. And the stage number one is uh, essentially delta S for the process above is a summation of two processes. One is constant pressure processes, and second one is a constant, um, I guess, a constant isothermal processes. And uh, so this is a uh, constant pressure. This is isothermal. So for a given temperature, your pressure is changing from initial pressure to final pressure. Right? And for the uh, constant pressure process, your heat undergoes here. The same as uh, dH, right? so therefore dH is, uh, if you have a heat reversible, you can put it in and then you need to uh, sum it up by dividing it, T, to be able to do it, uh, to calculate the change in the how much of the heat reversible was obtained here. And then this is same as Cp over T dt, because dH is Cp uh, and, uh, times dt. 
So, okay, so let's, let's do one by one. I think the first first one is delta s, first one. So it's essentially, you're changing yourself from, uh, this is a 298 Kelvin to 398 Kelvin. So, from T initial to T final, Cp over T dt. So that's the process under constant pressure. So that's the one that I'm going to use. And then that's the case. This is a CP ln uh, TFTI. And that's an n times CPM ln TFTI. And so that's a 3.00. And then as the problem says, uh, 5 times R over 2, and then T is 398, 298, and you will get it at 18.0 Joule per Kelvin. So that's all for the process number one. For the process number two, which is an isothermal process, delta S2, and then this is a probably, you remember uh, the, the one that delta S is NR LN VF VI. For, this is for isothermal. Actually, for the isothermal process uh, and the reversible, and there is a volume change, reversible you can look at my my note and the other things to figure that out and uh, it, it does not depend on actually the temperature itself and then the one thing to note is uh, because temperature is constant your uh, pressure times volume is a constant so what that means is final volume over initial volume is actually same as pressure initial divided by pressure final. So this is uh, something that I think I Johnny that I think you you know you following my material pretty well, and this is uh, something that I didn't uh, cover uh, very well in my class. So this is uh, what has been derived, but now the new equation is N R L N P I over P F. That's for the press uh, changing the pressure. Uh, from initial to final. Okay, so this is for the isothermal because uh, because it still it is a constant temperature iso isothermal process. So having said that, uh, we are going back to n is 3.00 r. What is my initial pressure? 1.0. Final pressure 5.0. Okay, so you're going to put that together uh, to, to find out what's the my value, and that is minus 40.1 joule mole Kelvin. Okay, so therefore, delta S uh, for this process is um, 18.0 minus 40.1 and that is uh, uh, that will, that, so that will be the answer and that's about uh, I'll, just, I'll just round it off and uh, there will be something uh, so two, 22, 22, minus 22, minus 22 joule, joule per mole, joule per Kelvin, sorry about that, minus joule, joule per Kelvin. Okay, so here I quickly sh show it to you how this is being being uh, calculated. Remember this one is actually uh, du isothermal q plus w and uh, this is a reversible 
work reversible and then um, we have defined that so therefore Q reversible is same as minus work reversible and that's a minus uh, plus NRT LN VF V initial and then all you gotta do is you just have to divide the whole term by T just going away and so that's why you ended up getting this equation just shown up here okay thank you for your attention